Welcome guys, welcome to this video. In this video we are going to develop a complete WordPress team. Here we have uh, a WordPress team basically here in the HTML file. So this is the theme. So we will be using the uh, sliders. We will be using the uh, post here dynamically. We have the footer and then we have single uh, page where we have displaying categories. So after all we have the uh, displaying like this so here currently I have posts coming from database this is store in our database so if I go to dashboard on uh, all posts we have posts here and these posts are showing up here we have categories so we are dealing with archive pages we go to read more we have recent posts showing up here we are going to match the theme styling we go to each post we have a search in place so if I search for as a test search for a search for test keyword we have the search working we go to the next page you can see that the style of the pagination is working with the theme style so the way it is done in the main theme so it's just gonna match it we also going to sort of create pages menus and we gonna update the uh, slider so here this slider is completely dynamic it is coming from our post type that is the slider we created and we have two slides user can add more slides here we are just adding here we have the dynamic coming posts so let's see how we can develop this wordpress theme from scratch all right guys so starting with we need to download this local from flywheel so they click on the link here and i come here uh, you can click and download it works it is free it will work on your windows mac system so i click download here you can see that mac windows linux so whichever your system is i select windows here you just need to pass some details so i'm gonna do that and uh once done, you will get the file just the way I'm getting here. So I'm going to click save here. It's going to download straight away. And uh, all right, guys, the so download is complete here. I have the EXE. I'm going to run this file. All right, here it is for anyone. And I'm just going to install it. Now, once installed, we can run it straight away. And here it is. So this is the app that is going to come open in your uh, computer. So here we have uh, a new. Now once you do the add new site, you get this. What's your site name? I'm gonna add here test, and we just gonna hit continue. Uh, we have preferred version and custom. If you want custom, you can select the PHP version. Which PHP version you want to work with? server engine exit apache or database uh, which we want to use i'll go with preferred for now i hit continue now here we have username pad, password and email for your account when you work with the your wordpress app so i will set here to manu password can be one two three four five six seven eight and i will leave it for now so i say add a site and it's going to do its thing here so we need to wait till it completes. It asks for permissions, just hit allow. All right, the site is up, you can see here, we have the uh, site set up like this. We can go to test.local to view it. So if I copy this, uh, the main thing is here, it's a stop site. So if I hit this, it is gonna stop it. And if I hit start site, this is going to start the site. So if I go to browser and run this local dot test you can see we have a wordpress site set up there by default so this is if it is stopped here it's not going to work in the browser so make sure it is running now for the admin we have, this is going to be the uh, uh, admin so i added the name and the password if you remember so we just need to pass that one two three four five six seven eight and i'm going to log in and save this so you can see we are here uh, we have updated level you can install update if you want to just hit update it is going to do the update for you and uh, yeah, the rest of this, the rest of us, everything is set up. We have database already set up, and nothing else we need to touch other than that. So, to minimize this, 
All right, so we basically have the, uh, you know, I believe you are under the, you have the understanding with the dashboard, if you're not, so let's see what it, exactly here it is. So we have the dashboard here. We can create posts. We have option here. Uh, if you click on all posts, we're gonna see the posts we have in our uh, database. We can add a new post by clicking on add new. We can edit, trash, view, everything. Uh, all the options are here. We can add the author. We can create the categories. For creating categories, you go here and you can add here uh, the categories. We can add tags, so tags are going to come here. We have media, so if you want to use images or videos, you can add upload images here. We have pages, so by default, we have privacy policy and sample page, but we will be adding more pages in a moment. We can have comments, so if you want to work with comments uh, in your application, you want to implement comments, here. it's here. We have appearance, inside there we have themes. So we can select uh, themes here, and uh, if you go to add new, it's going to go to the WordPress library where we have a lot of themes, and these themes are free and uh, popular themes. You can install any of these themes if you want to, just simply click install. Before installing, you can preview these as well. Now, uh, also we have a customize option. Once you have a theme installed, you can change the things. Like you can see here, we have option to change the colors, uh, change the site identity if you like. We have just another website. Like we are, uh, we're gonna change the test, and I say uh, WordPress theme. So you can see that it is changing the title, and I say publish, and it is going to be saved. Now we can also, uh, if we go back here, we have widgets. So if you want to use widgets, uh, basically for the uh, recent posts, search options, recent comments, these kind of things, if you want to show on pages, you can use widgets. We have menus, so the main site menu when you go on any site, you see. So we need to create these menus, we'll see in a moment. We have plugins. You can see installed plugins here. Currently we don't have any plugins installed, but if you click add new, you will go to a library where you can install plugins. There are some plugins you will be installing for your live websites, for SEO, for website protection. So this is something uh, you can explore. Each plugin is given the weighting, it's, yeah, as well as given how many installations are already done. So this plugin is installed about 5 million times. So you can see that it's a good trusted plugin. You can read about this plugin by clicking on more detail. And if and possibly you can see the screenshot as well. So uh, this is plugins. Then we come to users. Now here we have the user uh, if he had multiple users, you will see multiple users here. For now, I just register a single user as admin. So we have our user showing up here, email showing up here, and the role showing up here. We have only one post by this user, so it's showing there too. Now, as well as we can create a user, if you want to, you can do that. Now, if you want to uh, add someone else to use your website, you can create a user here. You can set the role. So basically, if you uh, the subscriber is the role which is, has the minimum power, and admin is the role which has maximum power. So you can uh, see about this. Now we will see explore it more, but for now I'm going to go here next. You can see your profile, and here you can select the theme here, and then for the avatar we need to go to gravatar.com and register there, and from there it's going to fetch the avatar. So I'm going to yeah, update the profile, and yeah. Now we have tools. We have here a few tools. We can import data and we have some available tools here. Uh, basically we use here import and export for some cases, but there are more advanced plugins that you can use to import and export your posts and data from the website. So we use these less because these are quite basic. Then we have settings. Now settings is something you use wise, uh, widely. So if I go to general settings, you can see that we have site title, title here. We have the site tagline, you can change it here. You can uh, say like if you want ever anyone to register your website, you can check here. You can set default role for the person who ever registered to your website. You can set the time zone here, country here, date formatting here, and the week starts from. Now if I go to writing, we have here a default category. So if you create a category and you want to set the default, you can select here. Then this post format, you can select here as well. We will explore it a bit later. Now here we have the email uh, settings, so we can update that here. In reading, if I go here, we have, uh, by default, WordPress shows your latest posts by default to the main page. So if I go here, visit the site, uh, you will see Hello World. Hello World is a post created by WordPress by default. So if I go to posts, you can see that Hello World. 
So this fetching that pose. If you want to statically set custom pages, you can just click here and select the pages. We currently don't haven't created any pages, so we can't. So we'll see in a moment. By default, WordPress fetches 10 posts. You can uh, decrease it or increase it up to you. It's totally up to you. Now, if you want to show full text or just a summary, you can select that here too. While you're developing your website, you can uh, click Discourage so that search engines won't uh, find your website for the part of development, or you can leave it and check. It's totally up to you. Now, then we have discussions. Uh, there are a few options if you want to explore more what exactly you want to do, like um, you can see that automatically close comments on article older than 14 days, or like some uh, settings that you might want to change in your website or avatar, how it should go, how it should display by default. Now here we have media. Here we have a few image sizes set up already, thumbnail, medium, large. If you want to change by default WordPress set up this way, so if you upload an image, WordPress will uh, upload these sizes for each image. Now if you want to change these sizes, uh, you can do that here too. Or we will see that how we can add the custom image sizes programmatically. Now here we have permalinks. Uh, permalinks are the links when you go to a website on any uh, posts, you can see here. It gives you the example as well. So these are the, the structures of the links. So whichever you prefer, you can uh, choose that one. By default, post name is. When we hit save changes, it updates the permitting structures you can see here. Then we have privacy. That's uh, not much we can touch here. So let's get started to work with the uh, theme. So, so I have a theme that we are going to convert. Uh, here is this theme. So if I open this one, this is the theme we will be converting. So we have about page, we have news page, and we have a few posts showing up here in you know, pagination as well as the home page is like looks like this. So uh, I go to local and here if you right click here and you say show folder and then it's gonna give you the folder. So here is the folder that I'm interested in. So we have our test website and inside it we have app and then public, and there we have WP content. So this is basically WordPress files, which is present in your public directory. You can see here, I have public, so you can see these are WordPress files. Inside WP content, we can see themes directory, and here we have three themes present. Now if I go back to the WordPress, and here I'll look for appearance themes, you will see we have the uh, exactly the three themes, the themes we have present in this directory. So if we want to create a new theme, we will be creating it right here. So I create a folder here with the name of Sky. And this folder, I'm going to open with the text editor. So I'm going to open the text editor and I'm going to paste here. Okay, now I said trust. And here we currently don't have any file. So to create a theme, we need to create two files. First of all, so I say index.php. And another file is style.css. Now, style.css, we need to define what is the name of our theme and author URL or anything like that. So, to do that, you simply start a comment and then you simply say theme and make sure spellings are correct. So, it's going to be theme name and theme name going to be sky. Then, we want to have author URI. And all three of is going to be HTTPS, and I'm going to give it to so I'll start this. All right, then we say author. Am I creating the this one? So I call my my. All right. So as you add detail here, this is going to display in the admin, and we are still going to add the version. So as soon as we're just starting it, it's 1.0, and we end the comment. There are more options you can add here. And for that, you can read more um, with the WordPress documentation. So currently, these two files are saved and in index.php, I say home page, just, just to see what happens here. So I go back to the admin here, and what I'm going to do is I refresh the page, and you will see we have a theme. So if I hit theme details, we have by menu. If I click this, if you see here at the bottom left corner, when I hover over it, you can see that it's the author URI where it's gonna take us if I click this. So we have version 1.0. Now, uh, for the image, like these themes as image, so if you want to set an image in your project, all you need to do, uh, if I go back to the directory in any other theme, 
uh, you need to set an image a PNG file so it's a PNG screenshot you just give the name of screenshot and it should be a PNG file so I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to go team directory and I'm going to paste into sky and I'm going to paste here just like that and you will notice that this file would show here now so any image you want to show uh, you just can add like this so I have a few images here and here I have a PNG file I'm going to copy this file I'm going to paste in this directory and I'm going to change the name so I'm just going to copy this name and I'm going to delete this file and I'm going to paste this name here and we go back here refresh you can see that this changed all right, now let's work with this. So the resolution of image should be uh, according to the uh, WordPress standard, then it will fulfill. Uh, now I'm going to activate this theme. So I activate now. So this is activated. Now if I go back to the uh, site uh, by uh, visit site, or you can open it in a new tab simply. So we get the home page, the text we added, if you remember. So I'm going to remove this and minimize this so in text editor we added this home page so that is what is showing up here all right so let's do this first and a few posts in our website because currently we don't have now for adding the posts you simply click add new now here you will see this kind of panel now here you can add a post so i'm going to add a title so it's going to be post so here extra space we can assign category to a post. So here uh, we can create a category. So I'm going to create a category with the name of, uh, let's call it PHP category. So you can see by default it checks. Then we can have here our WordPress as well. And let's add Laravel. And let's add uh, JavaScript. All right, so we have four categories. We can assign all these categories to single post, but I don't want to, so I'm just going to assign WordPress to this one and that's it you can set a parent category if you want to but I'm going to leave it now and then we can set tags tags are some statements for your SEO so basically uh, if this post is about WordPress or WordPress uh, tutorial something like that or PHP tutorial and this is the tag you can say and then we have excerpt so this is the text that uh, um, yeah. basically we call the excerpt in front and then this text will display there so we'll see that now we have the stick to per on the top so then when you create a new post this will be stick on the first uh, when the user sees it so for the uh, text here content I'm using Laura Mipson I'm just gonna copy some demo content here and I'm gonna paste here like this and I hit publish and this is the first post so if I go to all posts we have uh, now one post. Now I'm gonna add a few posts here so that we can work with those posts behind the scenes. So, all right guys behind the scenes I added these 10 posts. Now we have these posts you can see all these posts have categories and tags and uh, now if we go back to the front page it's not showing still not anything because we have no code set up. So what I'm going to do I'm going to run a loop for WordPress and that loop is going to show the post. So let's do that. So what we do here we simply say uh, for working with the PHP file, you start with PHP and then at the end you send with the PHP and inside here we can write PHP code. Now what code we want? We want to loop through the posts that we have in WordPress database. So we say while and here we say have underscore posts. Alright, so simply we are saying while we have posts, do something. And what we want to do, we want to say, we are going to say here, the post, get the post. All right, and when you say get the posts, uh, we need to tell what exactly we want to display now. So for that, we can say here the underscore title. So I want to display the title. And uh, if I save this and go here and refresh, uh, you can see that we have the title showing up here, but they are not showing properly. They are one after the other. So if I remove this here, we have the power to end PHP and then start PHP again. So when you do this here, what we can do, we can give the HTML tags. So if I say here, let's say uh, we want to show our uh, title in H1 tag. And when you open the H1 tag inside, here you start PHP again. And, and PHP again and inside and you can put the title. Now, if you go back and refresh the page, you can see that the titles are coming one after the other. 
and in the h1 tag so yeah that's how we do it so basically we will put the html inside it and it's going to display like that so first thing first what we're going to do we want to have a few files one file going to uh, have the header where we have our navigation on top so if i go to our uh, theme here html i open this with firefox so this theme we have navigation this goes in header then we have this content area that goes in body pod and then we have the footer this portion that is going to go in footer uh, file so let's create those files so first of all i'm going to say here uh, header.php and another file i'm going to call footer.php all right now we can call these files inside an index file so for calling header and footer we we'll do basically uh, here i'm going to start uh, or simply i think i can better call it here so we simply say uh, calling header so here it says get underscore header all right same way we're going to call footer so here we say uh, calling footer get underscore footer okay it is going to include those so if i go to header and here i say header in footer if i say footer all right now if i give back to browser and there in our website you will see we have header on top and if i uh, scroll down you will see we have footer at the bottom so uh, this is how you include the header and footer so what do we need to do now we need to uh, open this theme and see what content we want to implement. so i'm going to open it with sublime text here i have the text open i'm just going to fit it to screen so it looks better so we have these fonts html we have the index.html file inside it and what we want to do basically we want to uh, get some portion if you see carefully in this file we have a html style here we have head where we have some files included then we have body stuff then we have header portion then we have the main portion main portion is if i go back to the site so main is the portion that this is the main or content header portion is this navigation so I go back to main if i uh, close that then we have footer so you can see that footer is at the bottom so we have a few links that we can include as well so we need to decide what files we need and how we need so first of all we want this top you know uh, this portion included in our uh, project so from this header i'm going to take everything and i'm going to copy this and gonna go back out to our app in header I'm going to paste this now here you need to watch it carefully so we have HTML start a few files are getting imported then body is starting and then we have a header uh, included header is going to be this part okay the only this part till here um, the bottom part is going to be the main content this awesome WordPress theme this is the header if i go to about page uh, this about us this this portion is in the header and navigation in header the vr dynamic this content is main so it's we will be adding later so you know back to the editor uh, sublime now here we have main so i'm going to copy main as well this main goes into our file uh, go back to index.php now for now what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, i'm going to create a new file here for our front page which is going to be responsible for only this page and in wordpress how you do that you basically uh, do it by creating a file so let's create that file so i'm going to call this file front page.php all right and i'm going to copy all everything that we have in index and i'm going to paste this here okay now here this is now going to be powering the front edge of our page of our application so if i go here and remove the title and i say here front page 
you will notice that uh, now this is displaying because now that this file is overtaken and it is now responsible for your front page only so we have the front page here now we don't need this front page we uh, text here we can remove this we can remove this all and what I want to do I want to close this like this now here we can include the HTML so I go back to our theme uh, here are the main part this main we need to copy this go back here and put inside here all right so we get all the HTML between uh, footer and header you can see that so we just uh, the header is on the top so if I go back here refresh we have the content showing up like that so we have uh, now if I go back to the code editor in the header we have this string up so body is starting here now if I go back to uh, we need to copy the footer now so we for footer we are just gonna copy this portion so you can see that body is ending here we have footer which is starting here so from the footer starting to HTML ending I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna go and paste in footer okay when you save the file go back there now you will notice all the content is here but styling is not working that's something we need to correct now so let's work with that so if I go back to the sublime we have the assets folder where we have CSS phones images JS vendor everything is here so we need to include this in our project so uh, currently uh, in our project we don't have this so it's not gonna work so what I do simply I go to uh, themes folder here and I copy the assets and here in our uh, application if I go to the Revealing File Explorer we are here Sky Theme we can paste this folder here in our project so you can see now uh, it's gonna be available to us so here we have assets so we need to update these links and these links once updated it is going to power uh, the style and JS here so for that I'm going to show you the proper way how you install uh, you know include JS and CSS in your WordPress uh, project so for that first of all what we need to do we need to create a file for and this is going to be functions PHP okay this file is where you register our things so we need to include the CSS we will be adding it here and let's say function uh, loading files all right and this is the function which is going to be responsible for loading our CSS and JS so I to for note so uh, remember what exactly this function is doing we can add a comment so loading a CSS and JavaScript files okay all right so to include the files what do we want us to do we want to say here WP in queue underscore style okay so this is the in queue uh, so, uh, basically for loading the style so if you want to load any style you need to give it a name so uh, let's say if I go back to our uh, here and we are loading a styles here let's say I made dot CSS and we want to load this one so what I call I say okay we want to load I give it a name animate CSS and from where we want to load it we say here get theme and here we say get theme file URI so it's gonna go to theme directory the, the main directory of our project so if we here uh, if I go back this is the directory we have and after that we have assets folder right so we can append that here so this function will take the path to this directory and there we have assets so let me make a bigger bit and here at the end we need semicolon always so here what I'm gonna do I'm gonna append here uh, assets as we have assets directory there then we have 
vendor. Go back and see there what exactly. Just simply I'm gonna copy this because the rest part is the same, so I'm gonna copy this here and go back there. Like that, we can remove this, I think. Yeah. Okay, so this is gonna include this file, but for running this function, we need to pass a hook, and for that, we basically say add underscore action. And add action is going to take two parameters one is the WP and Q scripts. And second is the function name. So the function name is loading files. So we can copy from here and paste here. And this is going to load this. So this is how you include this style. Now, in case you want to include the uh, JS file for that, we can say WP uh, and Q script. All right. And let's say I'm going to want to use Bootstrap. So I'm going to give Bootstrap a name. Bootstrap uh, Coyer JS. All right. Any name you can give here. This just to be. Uh, it should be different. Uh, now we're gonna call the same function to get the directory. So we're gonna pass the function here, and then we have the Bootstrap where exactly. So we need to look for it. So inside JS, uh, uh, we have Bootstrap bundle. So this is the file I want to include now. So we can simply pass the path here. So I go to theme and scroll down. We have bootstrap bundle here as it's JS. So copy that. And here, string like this, we add. And this is how you include it. So simply, we included the bootstrap now. So it's, it's, uh, it should be working. Now, behind the scenes, I'm going to include all these. Uh, and, and I will be back so we will see if it works or not so I'm going to include all these just the same way we included this here all right guys so I added these here all the files and uh, there are few files uh, I'm gonna explain to you how, how this all going to work so basically uh, we have these files here and there are few files we only need in front page so uh, like this animate CSS, we don't need it on every page. We uh, bootstrap CSS, all cross all, all cross carousel is going to be the slider. So we just going to add the slider on our main page. So if I go to uh, the theme, the slider will be, uh, the slider is here. And if I go to any other page, like for example, if I go to about page, we don't have slider, so we don't need to include the I know on the blog page we don't have slider so we don't need to include all curves on all pages so in WordPress we can check uh, is front page so it's checking okay if uh, the front page then include these files if not front page uh, then it is going to include all these files outside of the safe condition you can see so the same way I showed you how we include the CSS we including CSS here we're providing a name and then the, uh, get the directory URI and the path to the file. And these files are in the current directory. So if I, um, and it should work. So if I go back here and, and refresh, uh, it's not working. So, all right, so we included the files now and the way um, here included is like this, uh, simply calling the links in the theme. Now, in WordPress, we created this function and added these files, but uh, if I go to the header file, we have the links present there. We can remove these links from here as we are link including from there, and we can save to WordPress. All right, we added the files in functions.php. Please include it in all pages. So to save to WordPress, we can add here a PHP tag. And there is a function that is WP underscore head. And what it is going to do, it is going to see, okay, if there is going to file, going to be CSS files, we need to include them here. So it's gonna check in the functions.php and it's gonna see, okay, we need to include these files and these files, so it's gonna just gonna include those files there. Now, we also need to include JS and JS files, if I go to footer, 
you can see that we have these JSS, uh, JS files in the footer showing up here. So if you want to load files in footer, you also remove these files from here and also start PHP here. And then a function, this is going to be WP underscore footer. Okay. And it is going to say, okay, but well, we need to include JS files in the footer and it's going to include it here. Now, if I go back to functions.php, there is uh, a thing that I need to show you. At the end of these uh, links, I added these null and then null and then true. Now, what exactly it is? So I need to show you now. So for that, whenever you get any confusion, just copy the function name. Like I'm going to copy here and I'm going to go to the Google and I'm just going to paste here and search. So you will get to the developer wordpress.org. I click here. Now in this, we will see this function, WP and Q script, what exactly this function does. So if we see our function, uh, basically, first we have the handle, a string, that is we are providing a unique name. Then we have source, we are providing a path to the file. After that, we have dependencies. So if this file required any dependencies, Dependencies means if this file required JavaScript or jQuery, so for example, this is a jQuery file, but might be this bootstrap require a jQuery file. So we will say here array and we pass jQuery as dependency. But in this case, for now, I'm just not passing anything. So if you don't want to pass anything, just want to include it, you simply pass null. So when you pass null, it is going to see, okay, it's all right. You can see that uh, and it's also provided in here. So we have the uh, in footer at the last parameter, which is uh, if you want to include the file in the footer or in the header. So we want to include uh, file in the footer, so we will put true. And a CSS file, if you notice, we don't add in here anything at the end here because we want to include these files in the header. So only in the JS file, this true is set. So basically that's why, um, because we wanted to add those files in further. Now you can read about these here, like the uh, second last is the false by default, we can provide string boolean and what exactly it does is basically, so basically it's a version number, so we can define if you want to pass, so we don't want to pass any portion number for now. We just want to leave it null. So basically for JS files, I'm adding true and these two nulls. So it is going to make sure these files gets added in footer. For CSS files, we are not adding this so that these files get in header. Now, if I go back to our website, let's see. So it should be working, so refresh. Uh, you can see that we are in test of local and everything is now the yeah things are working now now let's work with the uh, images we need to bring these images back so if I go back here and uh, we need to go to front dash page uh, page dot php so wherever you see images tag we have a path and this path is not correct right now so we need to pass a function here and that function is basically going to uh, correct the path so for this icon.png, we start here in the path PHP tag, and here inside it we call function get template directory URI. And this function again going to get us to the directory of our of this theme, and there we can uh, tell where exactly our file is. So I'm gonna copy this portion, I'm gonna paste, it's just gonna put here dot, and then I'm gonna put here like this. Okay, now this is going to be the full path to that particular. Now, whenever you see a function with get in front of it, we need to echo it because uh, this function will be returning something. And if it returns some value to show that value, we need to use echo. So if I save this, uh, let's add this on the old three. So here and here, we have the same icon.png being used. So we can call here as well. Now if I go back here and refresh, so if I go here, you can see that we have the diamond showing up here. Now let's work with the slider. So for slider, the exact is here. So what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to paste it here. 
Okay. Now I'm going to cut the uh, from here this valley. Yeah, I got a piece right there. Okay. So this is going to be dynamic. And I'm going to copy this. And for the above image, the person is underscore one. So instead of underscore two. So we can change it to one. Now, if I go back here and refresh. And we have the images showing up as well. Beautiful. All right, so now we have images not working in our blog posts. Uh, so again, scroll down and look for image tag here. We have image tag right here. So it's person one. We are looking for the same person. Uh, so it's simply about person one. Here, person two. So the link stays the same. And then here, person three. Parsing two, that's it. Let's just save and refresh. Yeah, we have the images working. All right. Now we lost the brands, so let's go back here. So we have brands are uh, here. So we'll just paste this here. And yeah, I'm gonna go to just gonna cut this and paste in here. So it's gonna be mail chip a PNG. All right. Now we'll go back here, refresh. We have brands in place. So far, so good. All is fine. Images are back. Now let's work with the menu because if I go here, it goes to a, a bond HTML that is not present, and we also need to work with the blog. So okay, let's see. So go back here, and now for this, we need to go back to functions.php, and here, uh, we if you remember, we added the CSS. So if I go to in our WordPress admin area, in appearance, uh, we don't have menus currently, so we need to enable the menus. And before enabling the menus, I want to tell you that uh, if we do everything in functions.php, we register everything in functions.php, it becomes a, lot, a large file. So what we can do, we can do this way. For menus, we create a separate file. For including CSJS uh, files, we can create a separate file. That way it stays quite easy to uh, organize. So let me show you what I mean. So I go into files and here inside the directory where we have our, our files, I simply create another folder and I'm gonna call this folder uh, include. So uh, we can call it, let's not include, let's call it functions. We can here, this is the directory Inside this directory, I'm going to create a file, and this file is going to be includes.php. So what do I do? I go to the functions.php, and this is the code that is including JS and CSS. So I cut all of this code, and I take this code inside this includes.php, and paste it here. All right. Now, if I go back, it's going to stop working because uh, WordPress is looking for functions.php only. He doesn't know includes.php. So we need to tell in the functions.php that we have our CSS and JS being included from that file. So we say here require, all right? And in require, we can tell uh, where exactly uh, it has to go. So it's going to go inside the uh, function. includes and then we have includes.php all right and with semicolon so if, uh, directory name should be correct then file name should be correct so this is the same thing we're just putting the code in separate file and then including here so if i go back here and refresh everything works back now we need to work with menus so i'm gonna create another file here in the same folder to enable the menus I'm going to call this uh, file navigation. So anything we want to do with this uh, menus, we will be working in this file. So it's a navigation menus. And now in, we need to first include it. So I'm just going to copy this. Navigation menu. It's menu, right? Yeah, spelling should be correct, otherwise it is not going to work. Now we need to add the menu support. So we say here, uh, 
start with PHP and here we need to uh, uh, add the menus so for adding the menu support all we need to do is so we need to say here basically uh, in a blind navigation menu and it's going to be register so uh, register underscore nav underscore menus and it accepts an array so we want to pass an array so I'm going to pass array like this and we want to give it a name so I'm going to give a name for our menu so it's going to be primary menu and this primary menu in menu um, backend and menu area it should display as primary menu and this will enable the support for navigation menus so if I go back now to the admin area and refresh uh, before refreshing if I go to appearance we don't have menus here by refresh we can see we have menus here now inside menus if you notice we will have uh, here create menu we can create here a menu so I call it main menu all right and this main menu uh, menu going to have pages so currently we don't have pages so let's add a few pages here I'm gonna leave this and I'm gonna delete this sample page I'm gonna create pages here first I'm gonna create home page so in our app here in the theme we have home about and instead of news I'm gonna call it blog so so it's gonna be home page uh, publish and then we have to create a about page and also we want to create a blog page all right so three pages and in our main navigation we have all three pages so let's add these in the menu now so I go menus I create here main menu we have home about blog just like that so if they another home we don't want to remove this uh, actually we add this here so yeah if you want to add and remove just click any of the options you can select view all so you simply select here and here it goes there now we don't want custom link we want the one that we just created so it now this is coming as about blog home and the order we need is home about uh, block so for that we go to so just drag and drop there create menu now once you create a menu we have manage location here we have primary menu that we registered here so we just need to say that okay that menu is main menu so we just save changes okay now if I go back here and refresh nothing gonna happen because if it's still hit about it's gonna go to about.html but for our from the admin side we can have the menus so we need to call these menus here so let's see where these menus are present. I go back here in file and in header.php, if I open the header, we have the navigation showing up right here. So we need to use a WordPress function here to get our menu. So first thing first, I'm going to uh, basically, I'm going to remove this portion. Uh, actually, I'm gonna remove UL so the function from wordpress going to generate a ul for us so here going to be php and here we pass simply uh, uh, wp underscore nav underscore menu and this function accepts the arguments so i'm going to call rx as a variable we don't need to echo it because it's a wp function now this is going to be an array so we can pass here is equal to array and we need to set few values so it's going to be first parameter theme underscore location so this is the main menu we are creating so it's going to be the primary menu i'm going to say the primary location for this menu and then we want to say uh, i want to say wrap it with nothing so container underscore class there shouldn't be any class to it so it should be empty then we have add a class to li elements because uh, if I go back to uh, the navigation here 
inspect we have some styling working here on li nail item so we need to make sure that this class is being added in our theme by wordpress otherwise this css that showing it in this style is not going to work so here what we're going to do we're going to say uh, i'm going to pause here a custom uh, way of i'm going to show you how it works so i simply call it add ally class and we will add this in to functions.php this class so it's going to be nav dash item because we want to add this class now we also want a menu class so menu underscore class and that's going to be the so if i go back to sublime and open the header so we have uh, this class here these classes so we need to use these classes in our ul because uh, wordpress function will generate a ul and this ul has this class so that ul generated by wordpress should have these classes as well so that it matches the style now if i save this and uh, here we need semicolon go back and refresh uh, so we have our pages generated you can see navigate about it goes to about page blog it goes to blog it is updating up there you can see and home it comes to home and we will correct that uh, it should go directly straight here instead of slash home so we will correct that in a moment but for the styling what we need to do we need to uh, work uh, with the classes so if I inspect this so you will notice here we have a live with menu item 46 class menu item and here if I go back here we have class set to uh, nav item so what we need to do we need to write a function because I added here the uh, method uh, how we want to add the nav item so what we basically want to do I go back to navigation.php file where we registered the navigation here I add a comment adding losses uh, to navigation li and uh, yeah so here let's add a function function add additional class So that when you see this function you know what exactly this function is doing this function is going to take a few parameters i'm going to pause those parameters here dollar classes then dollar item and then dollar arcs all right and we need to call this so i would say another wordpress hook add underscore filter and this filter will take uh, arguments. The first is nav menu CSS class. So it is gonna get that class and I'm going to modify there. Second is the function name. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste in here. All right, and yeah. So what we need to do in the, inside this function, uh, we need to say, if and we want to say here in underscore array so this is a php function it checks current uh, current dash menu dash item okay and if this is included in the classes array all right and then what do we want to do so what do we want to do we say dollar classes equals uh, active i want to pass it as a string because when we click we want to make sure this becomes active as it is uh, becoming active here here these are getting active all by default so for that i also add in comment uh, 
dot also selecting nav link for current page. All right, so here the another thing we want to do is if is set now we are checking if args now here we are checking add underscore li underscore class the one we added now if we go back to header here we added add li class and the same we are checking for here if args has this then what we want to do we want to do this then we say dollar classes and in the array when you put value you put like this so here you simply uh, pass this class so because this class of value of that uh, if I go here this is the value of this for marks and that's gonna be passed to this okay and then once it is all done we need here semicolon and here we simply say return dollar classes all right and if i go back and let's see if it works uh, we get an adder all right so we have this adder here so what we need to do we need to go back to the code now we are working with this function and we're using the hook and filter so i'm going to copy this hook and I'm going to go to google just the same way we did before we have add filter, click there. We can see here, we can pass here a hook name. We can pass a function, then it accepts priority. Uh, so we need to provide that. So we can provide here, I'm gonna pass priority as one. And then number of arguments. So accepted arguments, and yeah, here it says one. In our case, we have three arguments, so we're gonna pass three. All right, now when we do this, uh, this hook will work properly. Uh, previously it was not. So if I go back and refresh, uh, this corrects uh, the adder. However, our navigation is still not working, so we will correct that now. But uh, if I go back here and inspect, uh, now if you see we have the li and in the classes we have nav item there. And if I go back and uh, comment out this code, and then refresh and this time you will see nav item is not there so our code is working and it is adding the classes we need so nav item is there now we need to also add uh, so if I go here and inspect we have nav item here and then anchor tag if I go back to the theme and inspect so we have uh, nav item and then nav link to the anchor tag so we need to find a way to add a uh, class to the anchor tag. So for that, I'm gonna go back to the navigation file again, so that here, uh, what we do, we add here, comment, adding classes to navigation anchor tag. All right, and then we're gonna call a function here, function uh, add link, I'm going to pass here the attributes uh, arguments and then what we're going to do here basically we're going to again call add filter and I'm just going to copy this and this time uh, we want to change these so first argument going to be uh, nav menu uh, link and then attribute and the second argument is the function name. So copy that. And uh, we don't need the rest arguments for now. Here inside, what we want to do, we want to get this variable. Uh, just going to copy the variable here. And going to place here. And just going to say classes. A uh, class, sorry. And the class we need is the class called nav dash link so this is the class we need to pass so in a string we pass this class all right and here we say return uh, the variable now this is going to add the class we need so if i go back and refresh you can see that the navigation changed if i go to inspect 
uh, you can see nav item there, nav link here. So both classes are in place. We have navigation working. If I go to about pages, it's highlighting about page, home page, about home page. So yeah, our navigation is correct now. Now let's correct links. So what I do, I go to dashboard. And here, if I go to the settings, reading. Here, first thing first, I want to say when we load the post, load maximum four posts. Play, we have by default set uh, to latest posts. Now we have pages created, so we can select those pages. So we say the home page is going to be home, and for the post, we have a page called block. So go there. So now, if I go back here, uh, we have home page here, uh, and about and blog and you can see in blog page we have posts coming up so the about page is powered by page.php now currently we don't have it so by default in laravel oh sorry in wordpress it goes to the index.php so currently this is the powering from here so it's just giving the title for the page so we need to create a separate file for it so we create a uh, file named page.php and all the code from index i'm going to copy there i'm going to paste here and this time i'm going to call it uh, before title i'm going to call page.php and here in index i'm going to call index all right now if you go back here to home page this is powered by front uh, dash page uh, this file now if we go to about scroll down you can see that we have page.php about so this is powered from page.php so anything we change uh, it is going to be shown here if any other we maybe page we create is going to be shown from here too uh, now, if we go to index, we have the index.php button, and here if I go to blog, and scroll down, we have index.php, because the blog post now powered by index.php, so any changes you want in blog page, you need to add here. Alright, so if I go back to theme, and here we have what things pending, basically, if I go to news, we have post showing up here like this we need to make it like this so let's do that so first thing first I go to index.php and here I'm gonna for now I'm just gonna remove this and gonna start it here like this so in the sublime text we go to blog.html and here we need to copy main portion so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go back to our site code and paste here save it go back to the site refresh now we have things looking quite similar you can see that we have post coming the first thing issue is the header we need more do more this we want instead this so let's correct that so we go to the header uh, first we need to go back to sublime and here in sublime the header is a bit different so if you see here we have home news news and that is quite different from you can see that that's here so it's different from this so we need to find a way to show it so we need to go into the uh, we need to check what page we are on and then we want to show it accordingly so i'm going to copy this i'm going to go back to the header and here look for the this is the portion so here we want to run php code so i'm going to say php what exactly we want to check we want to say if and is front page so if it is a front page do this and the PHP start PHP and for now I simply say else 
and PHP start PHP and the code we copied from uh, the page we paste here so if we will improve it but for now we just want to add these two so I'm just going to cut this so if it is front page show uh, this portion of code uh, this code So if it is front page, show this code, and let's show this code. So it should fix that issue. So let's go back and uh, refresh. Uh, you can see that we have the news instead of that. But if I go to about, uh, it is showing the same. And we will crack that because it we are not dynamically generating currently. We are just passing the static text. And if I go to home page, you can see it is showing the a different header so let's do that so I go to blog now here we need to update this one so uh, so here I'm gonna pass simply a PHP function to make it dynamic and that's going to be echo it's gonna be single post title Right, the same thing we need to show here, and yeah, save it. Go back, refresh, um, blog, home blog, about, about. So, this is dynamic now, yeah, that's correct. Now, let's work with the posts. We need to show all the posts on this page. I go back to code editor. So we need to go into index.php and that is responsible for that page. Now here, if you notice, these uh, posts are getting generated here. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see these are the divs basically generating all the... Now here we have pagination. So we only need one, so I'm going to delete the rest. And here we're gonna run our code. So I'm gonna say PHP. Inside it, we're gonna start our uh, loop. So it's gonna be while. And we check have underscore posts. And then if we have posts, we say the underscore post. Alright. And then inside it, we can break it. Now, for showing the post there, we need to cut the single post here and loop through it. So we pass it like this. So we have only one, but as it is in a loop, it should be uh, showing. You can see that we have four here. And why we have four? We added 10, if you remember. If you go back to our dashboard post, we have in total 10 posts. Uh, the reason is if I go to back settings and reading, I mentioned here show maximum of four posts in a single page. And that's why we have four posts. So it's perfect. So go back here. Now let's make it dynamic. So we want to show the title. So title, content, yeah, author name. Uh, so let's correct that. For title, we remove this and add a PHP function again. Now basically we don't want this, we just want the underscore title. And this will fix it. We should have the title now instead. place actually we need to add it here what's in the business management so title goes here save and refresh so yeah title is now there now we need to show uh, uh, what we need to do now we need to show let's have it side by side so 
Now we also need to show Okay, we need to update the links. So first of all, I link us here PHP the permalink. So it's going to be perma link. So this is going to be here, and also this is going to be inside the title. So that when the user clicks on title, it takes you to the post. So the permalink is going to deal with that. Now we need the date. So I remove this. Start PHP again and inside it what we want to do. So for the date we say echo the underscore date. Alright. And we also name this uh, author. So we say PHP. And here we say uh, get the author. Get the author. As it is a get method, starting from the get, we need to echo it as it's, it will not show it all by itself. So if I go back here, refresh, uh, we have the author name and the time. Now the way it is showing here is 23 April. Here its month is at front, so we can correct that. So here first, what I want to do, I want to make the name uppercase. So here we say you see words and this is a php function so when you do that it's make it uppercase now the other thing is the date formatting so for date formatting what we want to do we want to say here uh, date underscore format okay and it's going to say date underscore create this is another function function inside function and then inside this function we said the underscore date okay and when we pass this uh, we need to pass comma and the formatting so formatting need to be D capital M and capital Y so now if I go and echo this out and refresh Inside here, we need to pass get instead of the uh, date, and then if I refresh, we get January 22nd January. So if I go to here, uh, we don't have dashes, so we uh, we can remove dashes from here. And then if I refresh, you will see it is the exact format uh, like that. So okay, we have the title, we have author name, we have post title. Now it's time. Uh, so if I go back here, we have content also. So for that, we say here PHP function. So I'm just going to copy this, paste here, and here I'm going to say content. All right, and if refresh, I'm oh, sorry, here we get the content. But the problem is we don't want content complete here. So we just want free directors. So we can use here uh, a PHP function again. So it's going to be sub string. It takes the content and then it takes the zero from starting character. And we say we want to print 60 characters only. So here we simply say echo. And here we get the content. Refresh. You can see that it showed to that. No, but we still need a bit more. So I think it's going to be 120. Let's make it 140 and refresh. 140 is too much, I think 100 is fine. Yeah, so we have it. Now we don't have image, so let's, let's correct that. So here is the person's image. So what do we need to do? We first, uh, for now, as for the author image, we need to set up the, if I go to the dashboard uh, here, I have an image uh, in your avatar, so you can read more about that. For now, what we can do, uh, basically, we can make this image dynamic, so I'm going to just do that. So I'm going to pass here PHP, and then echo, and the same get uh, function here, 
and then we're gonna pass this path to this function. Now we need to do a single quote here instead of double. And then, and then add the PHP and double quote. So it should bring the images back. So yeah, we have images. So images are not dynamic yet because if we want to have a dynamic, we need to have Revitar set and logged in with the email so we can show. Uh, um, I will um, we'll update it in a moment, but for now, I'm just going to show it like this. Now, if I click here, uh, any of these, it's going to take me to that particular post. You can see that. So, all right. So, for working with this, we need to create another file. So, if I go back to the project here, we need to create a file with the name of single.php. Now, if we go to theme. Here we have the, if I click read more, we have the single uh, page looks like this. So we need this page to be uh, there. So let's do this. So this is a blog-single.html. So here uh, <coughs> we need to get the, we have header, then we have main, and the footer. If we have guest data drive, we need this main part. And so I go back to the here and from the page.php I copy everything to so single.php and I remove this and here I'm gonna end the PHP and then start the PHP and inside it we need to paste uh, this main portion so I'm gonna paste it here we copy it again all right, so I save this. Now if I go back to here, refresh, uh, you will notice we have the something uh, like that, single page. Now we don't need this header, so we need to uh, modify our condition in header.php. So let's do that. So we go to header.php. Here we are checking if it is a front page, then do this, else uh, do this. So here, we need to say that if it is a single page, uh, then we don't want to show it at all. So, uh, else if we can say if not is underscore single. Okay, it's going to check if it's not single page and the spelling should be correct. Let's see if it works. Refresh. You can see that's gone now. And uh, we have a uh, some spacing issue going on that we will correct in um, soon but for now just we need to fix this one so we have single now we get the post data let's add that so here if I go to single.php here we have two divs one div 4 and then the div of 8 so this div of 8 has this portion and div 4 has this sidebar. So first thing first, let's add the post data here. So for the post data, I go here inside this uh, where the single post detail is showing up. We have this blog single wrap and I'm gonna basically wrap this with the PHP code. So here PHP and then and PHP and when here we say file have posts just like that the post all right and then we break it and start php again and i want to cut this single block portion and paste in there we need to Indent it a bit. Now here we can update the details. So we have here the second divided. This is the title. So we can update the title. PHP. The underscore title. Right, so it should be fine. We have content, so for content, we need to go uh, 
to the post meta and this is the content portion so I'm just gonna take all the content out and start PHP and here we're gonna say the underscore content and refresh so we have our content now now for comments we are not going to deal with comments for now so I'm gonna make this portion of code amp comment now and here for the date we want to add a function so here we say php open and close tag and then we simply can call here the date and it should be fine yeah so date is fine title is fine content is fine we can we want to alter name there and instead of comment this area I want to show the category for this post or because we don't have category so let's do that so what I'm gonna do uh, for that we're gonna I'm gonna uncomment this first copy this and just gonna leave it here and now here I'm gonna call for this icon we don't need this I'll say comment oh, sorry I'm gonna say here category. So for category, I start the PHP and PHP here. And what we want to do basically, we want to say get the category, the score category, and this is an array which has this on the zero uh, index. It has the value, so we can get the name from there. And as it's a get function, we need to say echo. So I'm gonna say here echo. Let's see if it works. Refresh. We have the category JavaScript. So we want this uh, category to be a link. So to make it a link, we need to wrap it in anchor tag. So let's do that. So it's gonna be anchor tag. And cut this, paste inside it. Now here. We need to pass and start PHP on top of it instead. And here, what we're we gonna do? We're gonna get the uh, link for this. So for getting the link, as we have the name of this uh, category, we can get the name from the, uh, from there. So I'm gonna show you how. So we say you get underscore cat underscore ID. All right, and we pass this value inside it to so get the category name there. All right, so we have the ID from here. So here is simply dollar category underscore ID. Now as we have the ID, we can use it. So here we say dollar category underscore link is equal to get category link. And inside this, we pass the category ID. We will have link, and this link we need to pass to here. So as simple as a PHP, we're gonna use escape URL, and we're gonna pass this variable inside it, and we need to echo it as well. So echo, save, refresh, and now it's a link. You can see at the bottom left it shows yeah, going to JavaScript. Uh, Page. So if I click here, it goes to here. Now, to handling this page, we will be creating another page, which is archive.php. So in a moment, we'll do that. But first, we complete this page. So now, what we need to do, we have the category, we have the title, name, all chain fine. It's time to work with author. So let's display the author details. So author is showing up right here. So again, starting PHP. And here inside it, what we want to do, we want to say get the author. And it's a get function, we need to echo it. All right, refresh. Now we need to make it uppercase as well. So you see words or you see first. Now you can use any of these 
So refresh, looks good. And we want it to be a link. Currently it's just a hash, so we need to uh, get links. So here what we need to do is say uh, PHP. And here we want to say get uh, author posts URI. URL, sorry. And then inside it we need to pass the author ID. So we say here get author. Actually it's the author. ID. And ID is capital in this case, so alright. So as it's a get method, you guessed it right, we need to echo it. So now if I go back and refresh, you see here we have the author in the left bottom corner, click, it goes to the same, uh, it's an archive page that is going to take care about author and JavaScript uh, category page, so we will do that, but for now, we have the author working. Now, the uh, post uh, for the showing the image of the user, so we can use the function here, so we basically say uh, PHP and this is the same function you can use anywhere where we want to use the author image. So basically we can get underscore avatar. Alright, and we pass the get the author meta. And inside it we pass the author ID. So get the author underscore ID. Alright. And for the size we pass here 32. Maybe a bit smaller, but just for make it working. Now it's a get method, so I go. Now if I refresh, uh, you will see it's not working. It's not showing this and giving this image. If I inspect here, uh, you can see it goes to the gravatar.com, and there. So we need to set up uh, the icon for the person for the user on the gravatar. So if I go to here. Uh, you should have the icon here. If you go to Gravatar, you need to log in and have your image set up, and then you'll be able to see it here, and then it will be visible here as well. So uh, this is the basically how you put it. So currently, I'm just adding it here. From the rest of the website, you can use the same code. Like uh, we worked on the blog page, we added the static image here. You can update it with this code. So I'm gonna leave it for now. So I'm just gonna remove this image from here. This code stays here so that you can use it. So yeah. Now what do we need? We need the post image as well. So for that, if I go back to the posts and edit. So here, currently we don't have the feature that it allow us to uh, add the image for each post. So we need to add the post image. So we need to enable a feature here. So for that, what I do, I go back here and I can go in function includes and create a file I say here enable features let's go enabling features.php just like that php start now we need to include it in functions.php first so go there copy and paste I'm gonna remove this enabling features.php alright so it should be fine now let's go back to that file and navigation enabling feature so add feature image support okay so we say here function add Featured image support. And yeah, that's it. Now we need to call the hook and this correction. Here we call after setup theme. Then we want to run this the function name and copy this and paste in here. And inside this what we need to say add theme support and then I want to add post dash thumbnails 
Yeah, and this will allow us to add image in our um, posts. Apparently we don't have any option, but I refresh. And now we have a feature image area. So we can select an image. So I select an image. this image so I add image for each post now well, currently we don't have so I'm gonna do it in the behind the scenes all right guys so I added the images to each of the posts now we have images for all the posts so if I go back here now the task is to show these images here so I go back uh, to the single dot PHP here we can show the images so for that we're gonna use a function. I gotta remove this and I'm gonna say here PHP and we call the function uh, get the post thumbnail since so the echo as it's a get function. Get the post thumbnail and that's it. So Go back here, refresh, and we have the image showing up here. So if I go back blog, and go to 9, we have image there. And for the, for all the posts, we are fetching the images now. So it's working now. The images are not properly centered. We need to set the sizes. So uh, for that, we need to go again into the functions.php and uh, Actually, what I do, I simply add few sizes here. So I say add uh, underscore image underscore size. So when we enabling the support, we are adding few sizes. So here I say single and dash page dash main dash image. So the main image that we are dealing with currently. I want it to be 600 wide and 215 height true I want it to be cropped so if you pause it true it's being going to be cropped and I want to copy three times uh, two times more so here I want to add a size for blog dash list page so in the blog list page we will display it and also we need to show it in the image slider so I will say image underscore for underscore slider so so here I want it idly 220 and maybe 120. And crop I pause this as false. Here I pause this as false and here I want it to be three, 300 by 280. Now you're just registering the sizes and you're providing the names so we can call these names. So I copy the name here go to single.php where we are calling the get post thumbnail we just pass the name now if I go back here refresh uh, go in here check again uh, okay go back here get the post thumbnail I copy this we need to go and check about this function so I google it again and here what we see we get here dollar posts we get size we get attribute so uh, what we do we say here null then we have size passed there and after that at last I don't want any other parameter currently so pass null as well and refresh yeah so if I go to the other images all are back yeah it's working so okay so far so good we have the images working you can have different sizes if the, you feel like this image is bit uh, uh, not fitting properly so you might want a different size or you want, might want to crop it or, that's only up to you, you can play with those settings, I just added these three. 
so we will be dealing with it now let's work with the side portion here we need to show the category so now for the category we go to single dot lay here I look for the uh, this eight portion we need to close it as this is done and for form we are going to use a plugin we will do it later but for now I'm gonna work with category so here we have category here inside you all I'm gonna run the PHP so I'm gonna say PHP inside it it's gonna be get underscore categories function and whatever we get from here I'm gonna pass it to categories variable and then we can loop through it so I'm gonna say here for each categories as dollar category and then here we can say echo and here we want to pass ally so it's going to be this item and going to have uh, anchor tag so let's ref just kind of leave it blank for now and then here we say get oh sorry dollar category and name dot we want to close the anchor tag and then we want to close the headline list item and it should be fine let's see go back here refresh so we have the uh, category showing just fine but the links are not working so let's make them work here inside it uh, what do we want to do we want to put two dots uh, actually we want to break it the double quotes then two dots now here I say get category link and it requires the ID and to get the ID we simply use the category and then term underscore ID so it should be fine so let's see refresh now if I see we on the bottom left corner you can see that category links are working so if I click on JavaScript it goes to JavaScript uh, here so currently we are not handling this page so we will do that soon but our category so are basically working you can see on URL is fine now let's work with the recent posts we need to show it just like this so for that we need to uh, match the style a bit so for that here we're gonna use uh, get posts function so for that let's do that so here I close this widget we have search widget on top, we will crank that too. For recent posts, uh, we have blog item here, then blog item here, and then here. So basically we have here three blog items. We only need one and we will loop through it. So I'm just gonna remove these. And here I'm gonna start the PHP. And here let's say uh, get posts to get all the posts and we call here recent uh, posts or I many currently I just got posts here posts is equal to get posts then for each dollar posts as dollar post all right PHP, start PHP, get this blog item, paste inside it, and then indent it. Okay, so now we need to put the details as we need. We need the uh, post title, so we'll get that first here. PHP, and then it's going to be the post title, so dollar echo dollar post title okay let's see if it is working or are we getting error so we get the error title so we can't uh, get the data like that we need to check what exactly it is we say print uh, underscore r and then say dollar post and we go back here refresh so we get post underscore author post underscore date post underscore content so that's how we supposed to get the data for title post underscore title so okay so we say here 
proposed underscore plan. And we echo it. The closing bracket and here. You can see our titles are now dynamic. Now let's get the other details. Date time. PHP. And PHP here. Inside it, what we need to do, um, we need to say, um, first of all, we need to display the date. So for that, I'm going to say dollar post and we need to get the uh, date so it's going to be post underscore date now we also need to format it so we need to say here uh, date underscore create and this is going to convert the date format and then the air date underscore format to match uh, the theme format so here I'm going to say comma, and here we want to pass a string of format. We need D, and then capital M, or M, or year. Okay, now here we want to echo it. So it should be July 12, 2018, and we are not matching it. So let's match it. So month comes first, capital M, and then day and then year so refresh yeah i think that's how it was now user uh it says admin we don't want admin we don't want one alter php and before this i forgot to make it link the date it should be link as well so for that what we want we want php here inside it what we want to do we want to say Simply want to copy this uh, date format, and here there is a function we use. It's a get year link. So if you want month link, you will pass get month link, just like that. You need to pass the year, so we will pass only year here, and then we say go. Now we refresh. Go here. If you see when I go here, it goes to 2020. So if we go here, it goes there. So uh, that's the link now. Now let's work with the author. So in author, what we want to do, we want to show the author name with the link. So let's do that. So it's going to be get the author. And we will be passing the dollar post post underscore author because this is this has the ID we are passing to this get the author and then we can echo it now we also want to make it uppercase so you see words so that we have it uppercase I capitalized basically so refresh and we have the author comments we are not going to work with comments for now so I'm just gonna comment that out so refresh so yeah now currently it is not link so make it a link so here it's not php and php and here what we want to do is uh, we want to say get author post url and then we pass the author so dollar post author inside as it's the id if it's a get method, we say echo, and it should be fine. So go back there, go here, we have author working. Brilliant. So this is done. We have categories working, recent posts working. Now let's work with tag cloud. So if you remember, when we create the post, we have a few tags created. So we want to show these tags here. Uh, so let's do that. So for that, we have to uh, get a text editor. I'm going to close this widget as it's done. Now this is the tag cloud. We have the anchor tags going. I'm just going to leave one. I'm going to stop PHP here. 
in PHP here, inside it, we use get underscore tags, and it is going to take an array. And this array is, let's leave it empty for now. And here I say, you can pass the arguments basically, and that's only up to you if you want to do that. I'm just gonna leave it empty now. And here we say for each, dollar tags as dollar tag and we break the PHP start the PHP and then we can put this anchor tag there now for the name we pass here again PHP and then we pass here dollar tag name and obviously we need a code here to show it now let's see here, so we get the tags, you can see, we have the tags. Now these tags are so many in there, it is few because it's not repeating. So if your PHP is there, it's going to show only once. Alright, now we need to make a link as well. So make a link, pass PHP here, closing PHP here. Now it's going to be the, uh, let's call the get tag link and we pass the tag term underscore ID it should be working it should be echo refresh now we go here we go to tag PHP and tag JavaScript so yeah perfectly working all right so the tags are done categories are done recent posts are done now let's work with search so currently if I type anything here, so hit search, uh, nothing happens, it's guess this question mark hash. We need to change it, so I go back to the code. I minimize this tag box. We have search box here. Now what we need to do, first of all, I'm going to uh, remove uh, the form from here, and I'm going to put here a simple PHP tag open. And then here I'm gonna call a function uh, as we do in WordPress. So get form, and it's a search form. Search underscore form. Now to work with this, we need to create two files. So the first file is going to be search dot php. This file is going to be responsible for showing the output. And for the searched form to work, we need to create a form search form uh, dot PHP. Now, if I go back to single dot PHP, we have this get form uh, search form. I'm gonna go to the Google, and when you look for this function again in WordPress documentation, you will see that uh, if I scroll down that we have to implement a form like this and we can customize this form as we want so that we can work with this but basically we need a form that is going to process the query and we have the search query uh, and a value so this search query we can use so let's do that so we go in search form first here I'm gonna create a form paste here and all right, so we have the action slash, so that's the URL. Then we have method get, and after that, uh, we want to customize there. So I'm going to PHP stop, PHP close. In action, I'm going to say echo home underscore URL. All right, so this is the function it's going to be. I want to pass a class in this, it's going to be class. And this class is going to be called search widget. So search dash widget. All right. Now we don't need label, so I'm going to remove that. And we have an input, so we need to match the style, the same style it stays in. So for that, the input needs to have some classes as well. So name is going to be S, as it is previously. So then ID, uh, it's up to you, value, we have search queries placed there. If you want placeholder, you can have placeholder. So 
placeholder can be uh, enter keywords and at last and not least I say here class and I gotta give it form control so that we have full width there and that's it now we need a button so here it says type image I'm gonna change it to type to uh, submit all right and then we need to have a class so I'm gonna remove this all right and it's gonna be a class so it's gonna be BDN BDN uh, primary and BDN block so that it takes the full width and here uh, it currently it is input I'm gonna change it to button and if we have a button we need to close it in, in like this and we can path inside here search I save this go back here refresh now you can see that we have the same form I enter keywords it says we have previously it was keywords so here, remove that so here uh, now if I search for like if we have posts with this title so if I pass test each title has a test in it so we can pass the test here hit search now you can see we have a question mark s is equal to test so it is getting the keyword and from that keyword we need to get value uh, we can show the search results so back go back uh, we have the test there still because we have the query um, search query in value passed i need to close this button as well now to display the search we need to uh, work in the search file so i go back again to the page.php copy everything from there to here and uh, it is going to be similar to the blog page so we will be having the search keyword and data relevant post so uh, what we can do basically we can even get it from the index so control all search.php paste here now what we need to do uh, let's see so if i go back to a single post search for test search now now basically when we search for test we are getting four results because we set the by default only at four if i say here world search you can see that we have no results so that means uh, our search is working but the results should show accordingly we need to update the header as well so but i do go back to text editor here we we'll need to go into the header file so let's do that i'm opening the header file header.php and here in header file where we have this header coming is front is not single and here we need to put some conditions so here, let me add a condition here so i say here else and then i say if and here is is an underscore search so if it is a search page what we want to show so this is going to show whatever we pass inside it so here we're gonna get this and copy this yeah. now we are closing header here it is not right it should close it at last so yeah it should have coattail from php ending to php starting till here copy and we paste inside here all right now uh, we need to check so this is uh, a search page so we can check here uh, simply first of all I'm gonna say echo uh, search results of four okay search is of four and here what I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the search query and that's it so if I go back here refresh you can see that search results for a query is world so we are searching for world and these are the search result if I go back for test refresh searches of for test keyword we have search results 
now, you know, if we already don't have any results, uh, we need to uh, put some kind of there is no content. So we can put here a condition if have posts. So pass like that. Let's start this if statement here, and I go after where while loop is ending here, like this. Then I see else, and here echo. Simply no results found. Simple. Now, if I go back, refresh, now I go forward for world and refresh, we have no results found. We can design it more if you want to, but for now, well, the only thing is we have it working. Okay, so we have the search page working now. With the, uh, We will be working on pagination, but so far the posts are showing, and uh, we can go to that particular post as well. Okay, great. So we have search working and we have categories. Everything is working on this page, but uh, the image is not showing for this uh, single dot PHP. So let's correct that. And so for that, what we need to do, we need to go back to single dot PHP. Recent posts are here and images are here. Okay, so for that, we simply gonna get uh, the, I'm gonna cut this from here the PHP tag, close the PHP tag, this is going to be get uh, the post thumbnail, okay, this is the function, and we need to pass the ID, so it's going to be dollar post, we're not using currently any ID, so here need to be uh, ID, and here I'm going to say Go as it uh, needs to be. Now we need to. I have a permalink as well set to it, so I add here PHP inside it. Get the perma link. Permalink. Yeah, so spellings are correct. We need to pass the ID, so I copy the ID from here, paste here. All right. D is missing, so add the D, and again echo, let's see if it's working, refresh, so we have the images at the place, and if I see we can go to the links are working, so if I click here, it goes to the post, great. Now let's work here, our header should be a bit, uh, have some space on top, and this background um, should display properly. So if I go to home page here, all is good and about, we have a header uh, getting here overlapped in the log we have well, getting overlapped. So if I go to header.php, uh, you will notice we have here this header coming with the class of page banner. So page banner is common class for all headers. So we can pass some margin here. So I copy this. Go to style.css, pass here the page banner class and say margin uh, top, I say 100 pixel. Now this will work on most cases, so here this is correct, about this is correct, but on single page it won't be because we don't have the header here. So if I inspect this, we have page section here in this case, so we can get this class uh, and I'm just going to copy class and put here comma page section and class okay now we refresh it is uh, looking fine as well so all pages looking fine now in the single uh, page now here we need to show the title of our post it's the blog this should go to blog page and this should be title so this bed, uh, breadcrumb is coming from single so let's go there, so it's here, so for the URL, I'm going to pass here PHP, closing PHP tag, and here, site underscore URL, and it's going to be block, alright, just going to copy and paste the same in the home, Instead of blog, it's just going to be single slash. Now here, we want the title, so it's going to be, let's 
paste the PHP tag and then we say the title. It should work. Let's see here. Refresh. We have the post title. We have link. Yeah, yeah. Now if I click here to blog, it's not going there. Let's see. Uh, okay, we need to pass echo on this and this echo to this too. Okay, now refresh. Now, if I click, it goes to block. So, yeah, it's working. And if I click home, it goes to home page. Perfect. Alright, so far so good. Uh, all is working here so far. And what is left? We need to now work on uh, about page. Uh, about page, let's add uh, the content in about page. So. So for that I go to Sublime here in about.html we need to get the uh, main portion that we have here. I copy this, go back to text editor, there we need to go to page.php, so page.php is here. Finally we need to work on this file. Now here I'm going to remove all and paste this and just gonna look better. Okay, now if we go back and refresh, uh, we have our content showing, that's fine so far. So this is our about page and currently it's just static. So now we have home page working and uh, about page working and blog page working. Now let's work with the, uh, if we go to ca a category, this is the archive page, we have worked on this one, so let's work. So I create a file with the name of archive.php. Now I'll refresh the page, you'll see it's blank. The reason is any category, any uh, username, uh, and any tag going to load on this file. So this is empty for now. So here, what I say, we need to show uh, all the posts from JavaScript. So it's gonna be similar to these index so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to make it small here go to archive paste there and refresh now here uh, now we are not sure if the post is from we're going to check that for a moment but first I need to correct the header so for header we need to go into the header file again I go to header uh, now this is the archive so I'm going to put here another condition else if if the page is archive page so is underscore archive this is another function that deals with archive now what we want to do I'm going to copy everything from uh, search so the way we did it in search so just the same way we're gonna do there. So I copy this and paste here. All right. So from starting ending PHP to starting PHP tag. Now here, if I go and refresh, it will show search results. We don't want that. We need to correct it. So here it's going to be conditional based. So archive can be of multiple types. So we're gonna put here if is underscore author. So if if someone comes by author page so what we want to show then I'm going to say here echo uh, author archive then else if uh, if it is from date and we first check for day then I'm going to copy and paste this uh, to save time so I'm just going to copy this say here day archive then I gotta copy these so for month it's going to be month archive and then again for a year it's going to be year archive in the same way uh, we need to check for category so for categories is is category and you can say that category and then at last we want to check the tags so 
is tag. So it's going to be uh, tag. So if I save this, go back, refresh, you can see that we came from JavaScript. So it's uh, category archive. Now we want to show the car archive name. So what I do basically, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. Now instead of showing the uh, text we're going to show the name so it's a category for category uh, for i'm going to say get the category this is the function as it's burton's array we want to get the name here so either this uh, so let's see if I refresh uh, we get the name right for the tag, we also use the function for basically everything. We use function here. So here I'm gonna say simply dollar tag name is equal to single underscore tag underscore title. Uh, this is the function. And instead of echo, we don't want to do it now. We echo in the end of line. Here say echo, you see words, and I'm gonna pass here dollar tag name all right so for tag now let's say if I refresh it's JavaScript I go back now go to a tag I click here it's a PHP tag so tag archive PHP so that's working just fine now let's see if we're getting the right results so I click the PHP and we are getting the post for if I go to the posts here and in the post we have PHP here and nowhere else so this is the post 4 and we got that there so if i go back and go to uh, javascript we get result uh, 10 and 9 uh, 7 5 3 and say so 3 javascript and then it was 7 i think yeah javascript 10 has javascript and 9 it was so, nine. so yeah we are getting the results as correctly so you can customize it if you want to, the pagination, uh, sorry, the number of posts. So simply go here, a setting, a reading. So instead of four, I'm gonna increase it to five. And I go back here, refresh, you will see this time. Uh, let me go back first. You can see we have five posts now. So if I go back to the tag page, so JavaScript, Okay, here we have only four results, so it's not showing the fifth because we don't have fifth, fifth in JavaScript. But if we go to blog page, you can see we have fifth. Now let's get the pagination at place because uh, it should be working as well. Now for pagination, simply if I go to uh, the index.php where we have our loop and uh, here is the pagination. Above this, I'm going to call function. I'm going to say PHP. Inside it, I say paginate underscore lengths. And now go back, refresh. Now we need to echo it. So I'm going to echo it. And also, I'm going to put it inside this call so that it comes after the posts because this is called 12, going to take full breadth. So here, save, go back, refresh, and you can see we have pagination. So if I go to the second page, uh, the next five posts are here, one to five, and here we have the 10 to uh, six. So we have, if I click next, we go to the next page or previous to previous page. Now we need to match the pagination just like this. We don't want pagination like this. So for that, I'm going to add a function. So here I'm gonna call a custom function instead. So I'm gonna just uh, simply need to remove this navigation. And I will add the function and show you how it actually works. So WP custom pagination. that wrong so for this we need to create another file I'm gonna go back here in function includes I added here a pagination.php now as we need to add pagination we need to go to functions.php so that file is here copy this 
and paste for pagination. Pagination dot PHP. So it will include it. Currently we don't have it. Now I'm going to uh, copy and paste the function here. So I'm adding the function here. So this is the code. Uh, I added the links as well. So here we can check on this particular link more about that particular step if you face any confusion. Now let's see what's happening here. We have WV custom pagination, the same function that we are calling here. Now when we go back here, um, now what we are basically doing, we are working with paginated links. And here we have the previous and next text. You can change that. So here, instead of um, by default, we get the errors at the end. So we are removing those errors. We're just passing the text here. Uh, we are checking the classes here. We are passing the UL class, so you can see here, we can pass in the LI class for we need it. If I go back here and go inspect, and here we need the page item as uh, LI class and the anchor tag page link. So we are passing the page item here, and that's the way of it. Basically, we're getting the page numbers, then we are exploding, we are checking if the page has a class active, we are adding there. Uh, here we are checking for current class and then active. So if I go here, and let's say this is an active one, and here we have current, so we are adding the active. Then here we have page numbers, we are checking and adding page links, so uh, page link class that we need. So, and that returns, as it is returns output, we are, uh, we need to show it, so we are doing echo here. So if I go refresh here, scroll down, we get something like that here, you can see. So if I, not exactly the same, we still need to find a way. So if I click here, we are on the second page, that way now we have previous one, two, but not exactly the same. So for that, what we need to do, we need to uh, work a little bit with the uh, style. So I'm going to add some CSS, so I'm going to go back to the style.css here, we're gonna say dot page numbers and dot current. So the current view which is going to be selected, the current page, because currently it's not working at all. And I'm gonna say here z index to three, then color going to be white, then we want background. color hash 6 say 55 f9 so the color matching the theme we have border color as well and I want to pass uh, hash 423 0 c2 and then we want margin left I want five pixel margin there then we also want position so position should be relative and then top to seven pixel because if you see currently it is a bit uh, going on both sides so we need to bring it equal to this number so for top seven then we min width we want to pass so at least that width it should have 40 pixel then we want to have padding and it's going to be 10 pixel by 15 pixel then border i'm going to give a solid one pixel uh, de one e six. Okay. Now at last we need text align. I want it to be center. At last we want border um, the radius and yeah, five pixel. Save that. Go back here. Refresh. And it's uh, looking a lot like that. So a bit different but a lot like that now we need to work with the because this text was previously a bit dark so we need to correct that too so here's simply a dot preview class because if you go it's anchor anchor like so if i inspect you can see and it has a preview class then we go to one and we have next and we inspect this this is a next class so we can use these classes here so i say color to be dark and i also pass this for next class so anchor dot next 
All right, I go back, refresh, and uh, I think this is enough good for pagination. So it's just working just fine. And if I go to next page, it works as well. Okay, so far so good. Now let's work with footer. So our footer looks like this. And what I wanna do, I wanna change it. So what I do basically, I go to the header search archive page search form and we open the footer.php and here we need to show some stuff so in footer first thing first I want to show the categories for here so let's add categories and that's going to be quite quick I just got to call here check more so we added the categories in single here so we can choose the code from there so I'm just going to copy this and with that we can use a footer so here I pass the loop we got categories we're getting the category we are getting the same structure here so I think it should be working just fine I think so remove this and see if it works now we can put anything in footer uh, according to the requirement but for now we and the categories so refresh uh, we have categories and links will be working so if we click on any of these uh, okay we have issue so if I click here okay so it's not working the, uh, the link so we need to correct that so for that here we are getting the categories just right We're using get categories then category link all right so if we go to any of the categories if I go to JavaScript we get four posts then I go to PHP we get two posts so that's working fine if I go here in posts two so two posts it should be and that's fine but the thing is uh, it's not updating here that is the header file so if I go to header here where we have the category we are showing it right here. It's, it's going to be using a function, not using uh, this get the category. We need to use another function. So it's going to be a dollar cat name is going to be single underscore cat underscore title. And then you just can pass like this echo, paste here, cat name, pass like this, save go back and refresh now we have the exact name so this is working fine so if I go to JavaScript it's JavaScript I go to WordPress it's WordPress and we are seeing the post as well just the way now this is archive page so pagination is not coming uh, dynamically so let's correct that so we added pagination here in the index.php so we need to add an archive.php as well. So just copy this, go to archive. We have pagination right here. Just copy paste this for this. All right, so it should be fine. Go back, refresh. So we are showing five by default. So we have three, that means pagination is not gonna show. And now let's work with the footer here i want to show the pages for the website and i want to also add a few pages so i go here in appearance menu and i want to have another menu here currently we only have the main menu now i want to have a footer menu so for that let's go back and register it so if you remember for that we need to go into uh, function includes so if I go to functions.php, so here we are doing it, and for enabling feature, I think it was an enabling, uh, no, not here, navigation menu. Uh, yeah, here we are registering it, so we need to register one more location. I'm going to call it secondary, and that's for footer menus, underscore, underscore, and I'm going to pause here, footer menu. Okay, so this is going to display there like that. Now, I'm going to get Kevin as well for a menu. And also, and I'll go back to here and refresh. Now I can see we have footer menu, so we can have another menu. So, edit menus, 
And here we say uh, create a new menu. I'm gonna call it footer menu. Let's hit create. It's going to be footer. This is save for now. Now currently we don't have I haven't added any pages. I'm gonna add two new pages. Negative all pages. We have privacy. So this is I'm gonna make it publish. Also, I'm going to add terms and conditions. So it's going to be terms and conditions. Okay, this is another page. I publish it. Now go back to the menu. Menu, and there we add all these pages. So in footer, we need to add uh, a blog about home, privacy, travel condition, all these pages. Order should be like that. Okay, so this is going to be footer, save it, go back to manage location. Here we have primary to a main and footer menu to footer menu. Perfect, save it. Now we need to display it into footer, so let's do that. Go into the footer.php. Here we have the footer links. And here, what I'm going to do, uh, we need to remove everything from here. And simply, then we're going to say uh, h5 explore and then we open the PHP and here inside PHP we run the function. So it's going to be wp nav menu. Now this is going to take argument args and that args is an array. So let's create that array. So here I'm going to pass that array, array, and I'm going to pass here some values. So it's going to be theme underscore location, the first value. That's going to be secondary. We can do the secondary menu, and then menu underscore class. I'm going to pass one class here to this menu that is going to be for our menu. Footer dash menu. Okay, so this class will be added to the UL. I'll add in the UL. So let's see, go back here and see. Now let's scroll down and we have pages here. Great. So if I go inspect, I notice that there is a bit more padding as compared to categories. We need to correct that. And if here we see we have the uh, menu item uh, for our menu. So what I can do basically, we can add again a simple uh, style fix in this case as uh, now we need to remove the padding. So I go back to style.css in here. So I only want to target the uh, links inside footer. So I'm going to target the footer with the photo glass and then the uh, anchor tag here. So let's do that. So here we simply say uh, footer with the class of page dash footer, all right, which has anchor tag with the class of nav dash link. We want to add some padding. So padding, I'm gonna pause here zero and not important so that it forces it. If I go back here, refresh and scroll down see if it fixes it yeah it fixes it so we have it working now if I click here about we go to about page perfect and if we go to blog we go to blog page perfect so we have so far everything working here uh, we need to work with the form other than that our rest all looks good so now it is good as well as home page we need to uh, make the slider dynamic all right, guys. So most part of is complete on our single page. Now, what we want to do? I'm going to go to main page, and here uh, we are going to uh, this link. We need to update because it's going to index.html. Let me correct that quickly. So we need to go to header, and here uh, navigation. We are generating navigation here. We have test website here simply and pass here PHP and 
in here we say co site there's your URL. That's going to be like that. So if you refresh, go there, that's fine. Now let's make a uh, scroll down. We have the slider, we need to make it dynamic. So currently, uh, we don't have a dynamic. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a custom post type. So I go here and it's function include a folder. We're going to create a file with the name of post types. So any post type we add, we're going to add in this file. So here is just going to create a function function and that's going to be, uh, let's call it create slider post type and I haven't started the PHP which is important so let's start on top and here what we want to do we want to add a hook add action and it is going to be initialize and second is the function name so I'm gonna copy uh, and paste it here Inside it, we want to say uh, register dash post dash type, and it is going to take an array, so dollar arcs. Now let's define these dollar arcs. Semicolon here as well. This arc is going to be an array. So here, I say array. First thing first, what we want to define is the labels. So it's going to be labels, and it's going to be equal to again array. And this array is going to be name. So these values define our displays there. So I say slider. Then we have another value, singular name. Singular. score name and it's going to be slider as well capital S and then after labels we need a description for it a description so you can add any description either say or post type for post slider all right then we have support what this file post I can do to air supports so what supports we want so here I'm gonna pause array and there we're gonna define the support so we want to have title field in there so then we can add title and then we want to have editor field so we can add some content we can have author field if we want to I'm not going to add this other field, I'm going to comment it out. So just to uh, let you know that we can add this. We can also add the excerpt. And uh, I'm going to commit in comment. We need a thumbnail an image so that so we can add in the slider. So it's going to be there. We can also add comment if we want to. But I'm not going to add it. I'm just going to comment it the same way excerpt and after this we need uh, I think that's it for now so I'm just gonna leave this like this and a few four more things here simply I'm gonna say let's set it to public and for setting it to public we want we need to pass true then we want to give it a menu position we want to give it to any number, just number I say this five number, then um, menu underscore icon. So there should be icon, yes, true, and uh, yeah, that's it for now. Let's see if it works. So we have post types. So if I go to functions.php, we need to include it here, otherwise, it won't work gonna be post types so let's see go back here refresh and we get an adder 
All right, all looks good. Uh, the only thing is going to be positive is your post type. First parameter is going to be the name, so I'm going to say it's slider. Second parameter going to be the arcs. So it should work now. Refresh. Now we have a slider here. Just go there and see. We have uh, add new, so we have field of title. We have edit, we have image. So if you go back here and if you remove editor, you remove thumbnail, you save here. Go back here, you will notice that we have only title and image and editor is gone. So to have them back, we need to enable the support. So I'm just gonna bring it back. So this is how we do it. And for more about this, you just need to search for this in Google to see more arts available for this particular function. All right, so for the slider here, uh, we need uh, image, some content. So uh, what I do, I simply go to our MIPS and I copy some content here. They're going to be two images. I add content here. I get the image. Uh, let's add this image. And uh, first slider image. And I say publish. Now we have one. And let's have the second slider image. All right, and put the content from Laura Mipson image. This time, and let's add this image. Publish. We have two slider images. Now let's fetch it. So we need to show in place here. So if I go to currently, if I I'm gonna uh, cross this off because we already added it. Now we need to go into the front page and look for the slider. So here, our slider is coming from, so it's a, here basically, okay, our awesome blog is here, it's just on top of it, so, so our awesome blog on top of it is this, so this is here, so we have two items, you can see it's a all carousel, which is responsible, there is two items. Now we need to work with this and make it work. So we don't need two items, we can delete one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete the second one and I loop through on the first one. So here we stop PHP and then here, we, what are we gonna do? We gonna say here, dollar query and let's call it the underscore query is equal to new wp underscore query all right and here we want to pass an array this array is going to have post status so we only want published posts so it's going to be publish and post type post type and it should be uh, type slider so that's what we want here and here to loop through we want to say if uh, dollar the query have underscore posts all right if it has posts then while the same the query has post and post we put here all right, and here we say uh, the query, the post. So everything will, we have the query in front of it, the post. All right, now here I end the PHP, start the PHP, take this item and paste it inside it. Now I just gonna put it here like this. Now let's see. So for the uh, here, here we need the full comment. So we say here PHP, so, and that's going to be the underscore content. All right, so it will show the content for us. Then we need the author. So we only have the author name. I'm gonna remove the posts, just the author name we will display. And here, you're gonna say basically uh, you see words and get the 
author. So UC Word will make a capital, get the author, will get the author name, and we need to echo it. So it's going to display. So let's see here, refresh. Now we can see Lorem Ipsum. Here we can see the author name. That's coming just fine. Okay, now both has the same image because image is not dynamic yet. So let's do that. So here I need to remove this. And here we pass PHP, then ending PHP. And inside we say get the thumbnail. Actually, it's the post thumbnail. And first, here we need to pass null. And then we have the size. So if you remember, we initially added the size. So if I go here, enable features, we added the image for slider. This is the size we need to pass. Here, the third going to be null as well. All right, as it's a get function, don't forget to echo it. So it should work then. Refresh. You can see that we have dynamic images. So if we click here, it changes the image and with the dynamic content. All right, great. Now it's time to show the latest posts here. The first post should look like this and the rest post should look like this. So for this, we need to uh, check that uh, if the first post is first, uh, we uh, do this styling, otherwise this. So for that, I go back here and I'm gonna make this section to close. And here we have the R also block. And here, if I scroll, we have this MD6, MD6 again. So this is what it is, uh, basically these four. And if you see here, we have four. So we need to remove the last two. So I remove these last two. And here, we need to loop through. So I'm gonna open the PHP and then close the PHP and here what we can do we can say get underscore posts okay so it's going to get the posts and we can say here dollar posts is equal to get post and we can loop through so for each dollar posts yes dollar post and here I break it and then start it as usual now in this case, we need to use index as well. So I say index, and index is going to be the number. So each time this runs. So what I'm gonna do basically, I'm gonna put a condition here. So I say if dollar $index equals to zero, because it's going to be zero first time and then it will increase every time. If it is zero, then do something. If it is not zero, then do something. So. We pass PHP and close here and PHP and close here. So if it is zero, we want to have it blue background styling. You can see here. So I'm just gonna paste here like this, and this is gonna go like that. And the next one is if it is not zero, so it's more than zero. So we're gonna paste it here. Okay. So if we go here and refresh the page you can see we have the posts first time it's blue this time we have five posts instead of four as it was previously so what I want to do basically I want to make it dynamic so here let's start from here so here we need to fetch the title so let's get the title so PHP and we will use uh, the underscore title Okay, this is dynamic. Now we need to make the link here. Let's add link PHP the underscore permalink and the PHP. I want to add it in the both divs so that we can save our time. So if we read more, it's here. The same way we have it here as well. So here we have blog it goes to and here we we'll read more. And here is the title, so we can add the title as well. So I just copy this from there and post it here. Save this, go back there. Now you will see we have post titles showing up here. 
and we have the uh, if we like go to link okay something is not right in link so let's go okay here I need to add the PHP okay sorry about that so we just need this uh, see here above it's all right Okay, so click here, we go to that particular post, we go to 7, we go to 7, and if we click here, uh, this is breaking, so this is the first one, when it's 0, so here I am saying the permalink, and here it is not right, this needs to be removed, refresh, click, uh, read more, and you can see we are going to that post, perfect, so it's working now. Now let's get the content. So we show the title, permalink, and here we have excerpt. So here, what I want to do, I want to show you a new approach. We can limit the number of characters using PHP. So by default, you might say the underscore content. and go here and uh, you can see it's a full content either you can use the content or you can use the excerpt excerpt so for excerpt let's see it still is a lot of content so uh, either you can customize the length of excerpt I'm going to show you how or you can limit the content so if we, if we want to limit the content you can do this you can simply pass here a string or basically sub string that's gonna get the underscore content and then from zero character only show 120 characters and you need to echo it now if we go back here refresh Okay, something got wrong here. So this is not the content actually, we need to get it through uh, the loop. So we need to use dollar post. It's gonna be dollar post. And then in dollar post, we want to get uh, the post underscore content. And here the same way we want to get the title so it should be like this so here as well so the underscore post post title and post title and post content okay refresh okay so it's not a function actually I need to remove these um, at the end here might be confused about uh, what exactly happening. Let me uh, even display it in the stand so you can see. So I say print underscore r and we pass here dollar post. All right, so we can see what data we have. Go back there and refresh. So well, we are getting data like this post underscore author, post underscore date, post underscore content, post underscore title. So we just need to get the post underscore title the same way here and the post and the score content like this so now it should be fine so i'm just gonna command this print r go back here refresh so you can see that it looks fine a lot fine now if you want to limit the count more so instead of 120 to 100 you can do that so here it goes to only two lines all right let's add the time so for the time let's and PHP brackets here, PHP starting, PHP, and here inside that what I want to do, it's going to be dollar post, uh, post underscore uh, date. Now we need to change the format, so we're going to say here date underscore uh, create to change the default format here and then we need to
display it to a date, this will format. And I'm gonna pause it like that here. Now we need to say here day dash capital month dash uh, capital Y. No spacing for now. And I'm gonna say here echo. Alright. Now we go back here, refresh. And I think we don't need dashes as well, so spaces are fine. So we can remove dashes. You can see it's, it looks a lot better, just like that. So we have the now alternating we need to show. And I forgot to tell you, uh, the here we can use excerpt as well. But by default, if we use excerpt, it is showing us a lot more data than we expect. We only want to show two lines so for that what we need to do it. Now for that what we do we simply go to here. Now here it's an excerpt so enabling feature I can yeah, add here. So uh, here I say uh, limit excerpt length. So uh, just gonna call the same to the function, so it's going to be function limit excerpt length, and then we need to call the hook, so it's going to be add underscore filter, and it's going to be excerpt underscore length. All right, and second parameter is the function name. Now, if I pass that. Here, all we need to do is return the length. So I say here, let's add 20. So if we go back now, refresh, you can see it's all a lot uh, less. So if I say 10, so only 10 words will display. So it's a lot less. You can either display using this, or you can display using the way we did uh, using substring. So totally up to you how you want to do it. Now. This part is complete, uh, I think. Uh, the author name we need to work on, so let's do that. So we have author here, and date there also needs to be corrected. So I have their copy from here, and yeah, here, I paste here too. All right, great. Now let's see the author name. So I remove this, paste here, and PHP start. HPN and inside it let's add the author name. So we need to get the author using get user data function. So it's a get user uh, data. It takes the ID of the user. So we're gonna say dollar post as we have the author ID coming from there, post underscore author, like that. And when you get the data, you can display the name from there. So here I'm gonna say let's see what we are getting. So is there a print and square R just like that. Go back, refresh. So we're getting the data like this. You can see we get an object and here we have the user nickname and also display name. So we can call display name. So we simply say here, display name like this. Let's see if we're catching it. So you can see that we get the name. Now what I want to do, instead of print out, I'm going to make it UC words. So it's going to be capitalized. And then I'm going to say echo. And I'm going to copy this and paste in on the first one as well so that it updates there too. Go back, refresh. So we have name, we are using it here, here, post, everything working. Now we go to the post, we go to that particular post, probably. And go to home. Uh, yeah. Now we have discover more here, we need to update this. So if I scroll down, discover more is here, we simply say PHP. Echo site underscore URL 
and we want to send user to a blog page so that user can explore more posts. So refresh, and user clicks here and goes to the blog page. All right, so we have pagination working. We have all the uh, complete theme working so far. We have custom post types, dynamic slider, dynamic post displaying, footer is dynamic as well. So far so good. And now I'm facing issue with updating the WordPress. So when I hit this, uh, let's see if it updates. You can even change the version of PHP if you want to. Now we are in the updated version, 8.5503.